What's up YouTube? Homebrew Subaru here. I'm ready to do another job. I actually did uh, the timing belt and water pump on this Bug Guy WRX last year. Um, over this last two months, three months, uh, he's he's smelt some burning oil and uh, he actually had the car checked at the at the place that I work uh, while it was up on the air having an oil change done and uh, the guys kind of thought it might be a valve cover leak but I, I did valve cover gaskets on this car and from the rate that the oil was actually coming out of the car I presumed a cam seal leak on it and I never did cam seals on it but when I did the timing belt uh, it requires the special holding tool for the cam sprocket which I didn't have I did order for this job so I do have it now um, but it's just basically going to be straightforward timing belt uh, take off the timing belt get those cam sprockets off and then try and replace the cam seals in the car it's a little bit tight uh, you can get a lot more room if you take the rat out but uh, I, I, I think I am going to try and do it with the radiator in there uh, maybe take the fans out and take the upper hose and kind of pull it over to the side it might little, lose a little bit of coolant but uh, as long as I take that coolant bottle out and the fans I, I should have enough working room um, but I you know I won't know until I get down there so uh, because I've kind of shown you all that before on this car I'm just going to get down to the actual cam sprockets and then uh, I'll continue the footage from there showing you how to actually get them off and go about replacing the cam seals. So yeah, this is pretty much the same job as what I was just dealing with on my own car because uh, I do, well I have the front apart, I, I told them that might as well just pop off the oil pump, clean it all up, reseal it, put a new front mains, a front crank seal into it and uh, that way everything in the front will be all renewed and should be nice and dry. This engine's got quite a bit of mileage. Uh, it's about 240,000 kilometers. Um, so you'd be talking a, uh, 150,000 miles or something like that. Um, and it's just, you know, the cam seals, so sometimes you can get away a long time with cam seals and they just never ever leak. You'll send a car to the scrapyard, it'll be a 15 year old car and, and you won't have to bother with them uh, where we live basically a lot of people aren't putting a lot of mileage this is a 2002 and with the amount of mileage that's on it uh, I, I've seen cars years ago that would have had this kind of mileage so it's come time to replace them it's a really good healthy engine uh, he does not drive this car hard at all he just basically daily drives it it's not so much of a longevity and reliability issue it's the smell of the oil that he can't stand and uh, even when I went out to the car to give him a ride back to where he was going I smelt the oil too so it's obviously coming out of the uh, the cam seal and dripping along the side of the engine and probably just right directly onto the exhaust and uh, just you know burns off and at the rate that it is leaking it's it's creating quite a bit of stink so I'm gonna get into it tear it all apart and then I'll whip out the camera and show you guys what I'm into. Okay, so I got all the way down to the timing and the timing belt is already peeled off. Uh, there's, there's signs of oil at the bottom of both the side valve covers, so it's collecting down on, on the corners down here. We noticed the leak over on this side, but it appears that that, that side's leaking a little bit more. Um, and I mean, there's oil residue all on the pump, but... Uh, I know this the oil pressure switch was leaking when he first brought it to me and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I did replace that and of course it's got a lot of dried oil up in here um, so for the for the time we're gonna take to actually do the cam seals I am gonna pop off the oil pump reseal it put in a new uh, front seal and then everything in the front should be taken care of um, there's a lot of oil collected down on the oil cooler down there and uh, you might have to get a gasket for there I mean, it's just getting to the point where the engine's got a lot of, a lot of K's on it. That's how what we call it in, here in Canada, K's. But it's got a lot of mileage on it, and uh, it's probably at the point where you know, 
wouldn't hurt to actually pull this thing and, and do a set of head gaskets and a rear main and, because I, I know it's a really good engine. But uh, we'll do the front for now and uh, you know maybe, maybe in another year if he still has a car. I actually want this car. I've tried to get it from him. So he takes good care of it and the owner before him took really good care of it. So, so it is nice actually having the uh, Company 23 cam locking tool. It uh, holds those camshafts right in place so they don't swing around when you're taking the belt off. Then for the next tool, this is the Company 23 uh, early WRX cam holding tool. So it is a, the tool serves two uses. Uh, it's got an inner and an outer side, so the inner side will do all the regular uh, kind of cam sprockets and go on there and hold them. And then the outer part of it with these notches will actually hold on to these little tangs that are sticking out from the intake sprocket here and it'll go on the inside of that. Uh, so I've got the proper tool to hold them. These hex bolts are commonly known for actually stripping and, and not coming off and require welding and all kinds of just a complete mess. And, and if it gets to that point where I start stripping something I'm just gonna stop what I'm doing and, and get a hold of him because uh, that's not something I'm prepared to do today and uh, I don't think it's gonna happen because I've I've got r I've got the proper tools to do the job. I really don't know why everyone strips them. Uh, I, I just guess they're not using the proper tools or tools that are just old and worn out, and they're not actually the hex bit isn't really going in there, and it's it's just worn out enough it slips on the bolt. Uh, but the stuff that I have is is likely to get this stuff loose without stripping it, so. Uh, that is the next step. Uh, all the all the timing pulleys are off, so I can just I can get the pump off and all the pulleys, and uh, so I'll I'll kind of set up to do that next. But I'm gonna take a break, so I'll be back in a bit. So I'm gonna go for this intake pulley first, and the tool's got to line up on all these uh, tangs sticking out. And I've already kind of lined things up to see how it would go in there. making a liar out of me now. There we go. Once it's in there, I've got my breaker bar with an impact 10 millimeter hex. And these guys are tight, so be prepared to give a good pull on it. There you go. Absolutely no damage to that bolt. I'll we'll just be able to slide this pulley off. And uh, this seal actually looks nice and dry. So now I'm going to go for the exhaust pulley on this side. And I know you guys can't, can't really get a good look at the position of the camera right it, as it is sitting, but basically the same thing. You have to have a really good hold of the tool because these are plastic pulleys. Yeah. You kind of want to have your bars so that they're positioned so that you can pull them together. Uh, it's, it'll make the easiest thing for you to do. They're always tight, that's for sure. There you go, another undamaged bolt and an undamaged pulley. Now I'll probably go get the other pulleys off and uh, get ready to pop all the seals and the oil pump out. Now I've already gone ahead and replaced the exhaust seal on this side. A uh, little tricky to get your seal puller in there and 
you know, to try and even drill a hole into the seal so that you can get your seal puller in or another technique is actually gr drilling or, or threading a screw, a self-tapping screw into the seal and then that gives you something to pry it out with. Uh, but I think if I, what I did for the bottom one, I just used this old, I get this old screwdriver, kind of uses a little uh, punching awl and I find if you just kind of go in here you just want to try and punch through a small hole right through the, the seal you don't want to get it too close to the camshaft or too close to the to the actual housing of the camshaft and when you're swinging it you got to be careful of the radiator so I'm thinking the seal can't be in there too too tight so I don't know the seal shouldn't be in there too tight I think if I just put some vice grips get some smaller ones of course my mini vice grips are gone I'm gonna have to try these ones there we go like all seals take a little bit of grease Put it on the inside of that lip so it has a really good break in. And then go ahead and place it right back onto the camshaft. And usually just even a, a good shove on these. We'll get them started. I get a 30 36 mil socket and I'll just drive in the seal as far as it needs to go. And this side's all finished. I uh, could actually put the pulleys on, but I'll go ahead and probably clean up this this uh, rear timing cover, just get some of the residue and dust out of it. So I've got all the cam seals done. Uh, basically went straight forward. Uh, those ones started in a little cockeyed, but I got them to straighten out no problem. I've gone started on this oil pump, but my crank sprocket or pulley or cog will not come off. And uh, I've heard of this before. I've never experienced myself that I've had ones that were tough to get off, but I've always been able to give them a little pry and and break them free. Now I've tried that. I've tried penetrating fluid. I've took out the little propane torch and heated this up really hot nothing's making it move so as you can see I got my uh, it's more of a crank pulley or harmonic pulley uh, puller and uh, I actually tapped out the holes for 5 16 uh, coarse thread and because that's what these these bolts are I didn't even have to drill I just I just wound it in there and uh, so I've got the tool all set up on there I'm, I'm gonna give it a twist and hopefully this guy breaks free and that that looks like it was all it took because it seems to be moving I'm just gonna put a little another little squirt of penetrating fluid on, on the end of the crankshaft just to make sure it pulls off nice and easy Yeah, and it's definitely moving. It's still uh, quite resistant and coming off though. You have to be so careful working in here next to the radiator. Uh, would have almost been better off just to have taken it out of there, but I don't feel like doing a complete drain and fill on the cooling system. See the uh, there's actual rust buildup on the end of the crankshaft. That's obviously what was making it stick so bad.
The crank seal appears to be just seeping just a tiny, tiny bit. Uh, it's really clean around where the where the where the seal actually seats in, and that's usually an indication of oil slinging out of there. Uh, but anyway, the the pump is filthy. I'm going to go ahead and unbolt it, and get it off, try and clean it up a little bit, and get ready to reseal. Uh, I've got to put in the new front seal obviously and I have the new a new little o-ring seal for the back side of the pump um, so yeah I'm just gonna pop it off clean it all up and probably just reinstall it it's not that technical of a thing and I've, I've kind of already shown it in the uh, when I built Tyler's car the STI so uh, I'll get the oil pump out of there and then once the oil pump's all finished, uh, basically I can just start going back together and putting putting everything back together. I want to give everything a really good cleaning in behind here, and uh, I need to keep in mind that oil oil cooler gasket. We we'll probably want to replace that. And you might be wondering why I'm not showing the actual timing belt coming off and going back on. Uh, I've I've done a complete video, and it was actually this car I did the job on. So I'll I'll leave the uh, shortcut link at the end of this video. So that if you if you're actually doing this job and need to know the whole procedure, you can go ahead and watch that video. I've got the oil pump all back on, sealed up, cleaned up the front of it quite a bit, uh, cleaned up the end of the crankshaft a little bit, and applied a little bit of anti seize just to make sure that it doesn't get stuck there again. Uh, I've mounted all the camshaft pulleys on. The torque setting is 72.4 foot pounds. I'm just going to go to 73 and uh, once they're all torqued I can start going ahead and putting everything in the front back together and uh, go about running the car. So that's what I am going to prepare to do. I'm just going to put everything back together and then when I come back uh, probably just run the car just to make sure everything's good and say so long to this one. So here it is the following morning. Uh, I did actually finish the car last night. I ran it last night for a very short period. Uh, I got some coolant into it, but I just want to top off the coolant again and just let it run. I just want it to hit operating temperature and, and make sure everything's going to be good. Have a second look underneath, make sure there's no oil dripping, and then uh, be good to go and bring my wagon back in for the next time. So doing cam seals while the engine's in the car is not the most delightful thing to do. And if you ever have the engine out of the car and all the timing off of it, for the cost of the seals, just go ahead and replace them. Uh, you know, doing the job in the car is not impossible, but it's not as easy as, you know, having the engine completely out of it, doing another job. Seals can last the entire lifetime of a car so in some cases. Uh, the higher mileage you get, or any kind of repairs that are previous that may have had the seal off and back on uh, more likely it is to leak so you know if you're ever playing around with the seal or have a camshaft out or uh, you know you have the oil pump off for some other reason or you're changing the oil pump I always put a new seal on so I do plan on bringing my wagon back in to work on uh, I've got to build the up pipe for it and it's going to take me some time but in any case if you like this video definitely give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Leave your questions and comments further down below. And I'll see you in the next one.